Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and tell God, thank you. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We welcome you to the Straightway Church of Christ, written in heaven, of Belgrade, Florida, where the pastor is Apostle Pauline Johnson. We welcome you to come and join us in service. Amen. And we just thank God that God has given us another day. Amen. Come on and tell him thank you. Lord, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. And when your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. And when your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes. Oh, 
this time, and then we're going to have our scripture that Deacon Desmond loved it. Let us say, man, as he comes.
thank God for being here today. Amen. We count it a blessing. Amen. To be in the house of God on today. Amen. And thank God for those of you who thought it not robbery. To give God the praise today. Right here we're going to open up to your glorious testimony service. That you can sing your songs. Testify your life to the honor and glory of God. Testimony service is open. We serve, we serve a right now God, a right now God. We serve, we serve a right now God, a right now God. Not tomorrow, not even yesterday.
testimony that has went out before God. Amen. The word says, Amen. By testimonies, we shall overcome. Amen. By the same token, if that testimony is false, that's what's going to condemn you. Amen. But we thank God for everything that has gone up before the Lord today. Amen. And we thank God for each of you being in the house today. Amen. We thank God for his goodness. Amen. We come into the park where everybody can eat. Amen. Glory to God. Get your plates out. Amen. Your soup bowls. Amen. Your salad bowls. Amen. Your bread plates. Then gonna come along and give you the dessert. Amen. Amen. The young lady coming today. Amen. She called on me. Anointed fall on me, sweet anointing fall on me, anointing fall. Hallelujah. Father God, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for this place and this opportunity, Father God. Lord, to stand before your people yet once again, Father God. Father God, to give your word, Father God. Father God, I pray and ask that I decrease, you increase, Father God. Father God, speak through these lips of clay, Father God. Oh, Father God, let your word go forth, Father God. Let it do what you sent it to do, Father God. Help us to open up our minds and understanding, Father God, to receive your word, Father God, to live according to your word and be obedient to it, Father God. And we give you praise, honor, and glory. We thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Giving honor first to the Lord who's ahead of my life. And to our wonderful pastor, Apostle Johnson, to my wonderful husband, Presiding Elder Bay, to our Elder Johnson, Elder Bridges, to all of our deacons, saints, and friends, to everyone. I just send greetings from the Lord. Amen. We're going to ask um, Presiding Elder Bates to read for us on today. We will be coming from 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. And you can just read straight through verses 3 through 10. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 3 through 10. You, when you have it, say amen. And you'll find these words written, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in my patience, in affliction, in necessities, in distress, in strife, in imprisonment, in turmoil, in labors, in watching, in fasting. By pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfailing, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers. And yet true, as unknown, and yet well known, as dying, and behold, we live, as chastened, and not killed, as sorrowful, 
yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. Amen. Thank God for Elder Bates for the reading of the word. Amen. And this is letting us know that trials and tribulation comes with serving the Lord. Amen. 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 And we know to live such a life, to exert such an influence, costs at every step, effort, self-sacrifice, discipline. It is because they do not understand this that many are so easily discouraged in the Christian life. Amen. We get some people that think the minute they come over on to God's side that everything is just going to be easy. But we know that even in the natural, we can't have sunshine all the time because the rain comes to make things grow. Amen. So we need the sunshine and we need the rain. Both of them are for growth. Yeah. One without the other, we can't fully grow and be healthy. Amen? Yeah. Glory be to God. So trials and tribulations come to help us to grow in Christ, to really depend on him, to really lean on him and see that when we lean, he doesn't move. Yeah. He's steadfast. He's a cornerstone. He's that foundation. You're built on a solid foundation when you're serving God. Amen? Glory be to God. Many who sincerely consecrate their lives to God's service are surprised and disappointed to find themselves as never before confronted by obstacles and beset by trials and perplexities. Amen. When you claim the name of God, Satan is coming. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. He's coming. Amen. They pray for Christ's likeness of character, for a fitness for the Lord's work, and they are placed in circumstances that seem to call forth all the evils of their nature. Amen? Faults are revealed. Amen? How many of you know we, we can see our weaknesses when we're going through? When we start to go through some things, hey, I, I didn't know I wasn't where I needed to be, or I need a little bit more patience. I need a little more loving kindness. I need a little more long suffering, a little more gentleness, a little more meekness, a little more temperance. Amen. I need a little more. Glory be to God. So, our faults are revealed of which they did not even suspect the existence. Like Israel of old, they question, if God is leading us, why do all these things come upon us? Because God wants to see where your heart is. He wants to see what you're made of. Amen. Amen. He made us in his image. But we know in the fall of the in the fall of the garden in the in the garden of Eden, Eden, the fall, we know that things changed around. God made everything. God knew what we were gonna do. God knew that this was gonna come about. Because just as well, God could have not even placed the tree of good and evilness in the plane. So he knows what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. He lays it out to us. We've always had a choice. From day one, we've had a choice into what we can choose. He doesn't force anything on us. It's your choice. Each and every individual has their own choice to make. Amen. Glory to God. So they question why all these things were coming upon them. It is because God is leading them that these things come upon them. Trials and obstacles are the Lord's chosen methods of discipline and his appointed conditions of success. How many of us knew that? You know, amen. So this is him disciplining us so that we can have a successful life. So that we can walk this journey in success. That we can gain eternal life in the end. Because that is the most important thing. To gain eternal life. To go back and live in eternity with the Lord. Amen. So this is his way of doing that. He who reads the hearts of men knows their character. He made us. He knows all about us. 
He knows every hair strand upon each one of our heads. One by one, each and every individual one of them. Amen. He knows our hearts. He knows the unspoken things. Amen. Better than any they themselves know them. He sees that some have powers and subsubtleties which rightly direct might be used in the advancement of his work. So he's given all of us a talent. He's given all of us a talent. And each and every one of us have a purpose for being here. Nobody is here by chance or the offset of anything. Everyone has a purpose. And God lets these circumstances see. We want to give the devil too much credit about what he's doing. Maybe at this time we all know the story of Job and how the devil was going through and fro in the land trying to see whom he could devour. And we know that, you know, the Lord asked him, what you doing? And he said, well, I'm going to and fro. I'm looking. I want to see, you know, but you got your people hedged up. You got them under your blood. You got them under the covering. Oh, I can't go through that. I can't do anything. And he said, have you tried my servant, Job? Maybe you're being recommended. You think your trials are coming just to stir up some trouble in your life, but maybe God's recommending you. Maybe he thinks you could step up to the plate and make the winning play for the team. He's calling you up. You're the next batter up. You're the kicker that's up. You're going to get another point for his side. So maybe God's recommending you in the midst of you going through any and everything that you're going through. Because a lot of times, we, we see ourselves, it's almost like we're drowning in things. That before we can get our head above water out of one situation, here comes another. Just like a tidal wave coming over you. And you're trying to get to the top to catch your breath. That's life. It's life. That, it, it's going to happen. But with God on your side, with God on your side, you won't fail. You will meet the test. Amen. And you will pass it with flying colors. Amen. Glory be to God. So this is how he uses us to see if we're good to advance his work. In his providence, he brings these persons into different positions and various circumstances that they may discover in their character the defects which have been concealed from their own knowledge. Amen. I know for myself that I have seen some defects in myself. Oh, Lord, I wasn't praying enough. Or, Lord, I wasn't fasting enough. Lord, I wasn't faithful enough. I wasn't on time enough, Lord. I didn't get out there and just push and get it going. I could have said something to this person over there. When I stopped to get a homeless man a couple of dollars, I could have told him about your grace and your mercy. Your goodness, I could have told him about that at the same time. Oh, Lord, help me. Lord, bring those things to your eyesight so you can see for yourself who you are. Amen. And it's so important if we want to succeed in this life, on this journey, that we know who we are in Christ. Amen. That he has already given us the power over the enemy. Sometimes we give the power to the enemy to do some things to us. Some things that God didn't call for us to go through. But we put ourselves in those situations. Amen. So every situation isn't God recommending you. Some situations are because you've been disobedient and hard hit. Amen. And you brought these things on yourself. Amen. So we discover our character which has been concealed from our own eyes. He gives us opportunities to correct these defects and to fit themselves for his service. Often he permits the fires of affliction to assail them that they may be purified. Amen. Glory be to God. We know that when a rock is put under pressure, a diamond has to go through a lot of stuff. It takes on a lot of pressure. 
to become that precious stone that many are after. You know, it, it, it has so much value. It's rich in value. A real pure stone is real valuable. So that diamond goes through a lot of pressure to get that purification, to get that worth to it. We know that an oyster has to go through all of this stuff to get that pearl. To get that pearl, that sand gets in there and irritates. It irritates. And he can't stand it. So he emotes this saliva-like substance. And it goes around and around and around and around that grain of sand to protect him. But it's making a beautiful pearl. Amen. Something of value. Amen. So when we get all the impurities off, Pure gold has to go through the fire. So all the impurities can be burned off. So all the sin that we can't see or won't confess up to, God is burning these things off. Things that we don't need, these hindrances, these chains, these bonds, God is burning those things off so that we can do his work. Amen. Not our work, but his work. Amen. So he takes us through those fiery trials. The fact that we are called upon to endure trials show that the Lord Jesus sees us as something precious. He sees us as precious. Something he is trying to develop. He's developing us each and every day. The more we go through the more he brings us up. Every time you go through something, you're coming up. You started as a seed, and he's growing. He's growing each and every day. And it takes some pruning to get you where you need to be. He's working on you. No, it's not in vain. Don't give up. You can't throw in the towel. God sees. He knows. How many of us sitting in here right now today? We know that people go to psychics and soothsayers and all these card readers and all these things to find out what their love life is going to be like. If they're going to get the job, the promotion. Are they going to come into some money? I'm telling you, I have the plan right here. And it's the 66 books of the Bible. It will tell you just how your life will go. He knows our end. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the beginning and the end. He knows everything. Why won't we listen to him? It behooves me. But we have so many people that will not take heed. To the word of God. Amen. Amen. The fact that we're called upon to endure these trials show that the Lord Jesus sees us as something precious which he desires to develop. If he saw in us nothing whereby he might glorify his name, he would not spend time in refining us. Amen. He does not cast worthless stones into his furnace. Amen. God ain't put no junk in his furnace. We got time for that. He's a busy God. He doesn't sleep nor slumber. So he don't got time for foolishness. If you're going through for his sake, amen, you're precious in his eyesight. Amen. The blacksmith puts the iron and steel into the fire that he may know what manner of metal they are. Everything is not made of the same thing. Amen. That's why people want to see it and they want to say, well, how she get to be the apostle? How he get to be the pastor? God knew what they were made of. Amen. And that's how they get the position. Amen. Everybody has a spot on the team. There's a position for everybody to play. Your spot is important. From the highest to the lowest, they're all important. Because God is getting the glory. And that's the most important thing. 
is that he gets the glory out of everything that we do. That his name is lifted up. That his goodness is being told. Amen. That we're out there telling the good news. Bringing more people in to glorify him. Amen. We get so off track when we go through something. Amen. I love when I read Job and it's so encouraging to know that, you know, when everything happened in the beginning, when God told Satan he could go after him and the, the cattle died and all of his beasts and everything, even his children. And, and as parents, parents that have lost kids, I haven't experienced that. But I have heard that that's something you will never get over. You, you just, it's by the grace of God that you get through that. And I, I, I just can't imagine. But in the midst of all of that, one by one, one servant was saved from each incident to come and tell him what had happened. So he was getting this news like minutes within each other. It wasn't no days and weeks. All this was going down at the same time. Glory be to God. And Job just shaved his head, put on ashes. He got down and he started worshiping God. He started worshiping God because he knew that God gave him everything. And he said, it's God's to give and his to take away. Amen. He worshiped God in the midst of all this coming down upon his head. All of his heartache and pain and in poverty. He worshiped God. We have people going crazy by this pandemic. There is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new. We might just be in a different time frame of it, but there's nothing new. There, there has been an offense against the word of God since the beginning. There has been um, things just coming against the word of God since the beginning of time. We've had murders with Cain and Abel. We've had jealousy. We've had all these things in the world. It ain't went nowhere. It, it was here in the beginning. We complain about so much and don't even realize just how blessed we are. Because people sit back and I've heard so many talking about how the pandemic has changed their lives, but not once in their complaining and talking about how it changed their lives did they say how they turned to the Lord. The only one that can bring you out of any of this mess who has control over all of it people are going crazy about this presidency i have never seen this much push in an election since i started voting and i have never seen you know so much emphasis on a census and all of this we are living in the last and evil days but god has given us what we need. Everything we need to survive all of this. When the children of Israel were in Egypt in bondage, God made a way for them every day. Every time. When the plagues came, when all that happened, God still kept his people. In the midst of everything that was going on, he kept his people. I don't care what's going on out there. If you're a child of the Lord, he is going to take care of you. He's going to make a way for you. You might not see it. You might not understand it. But he has every provision that you need to make it through. When the children of Israel were out there in the wilderness, they were complaining. And God was feeding them fresh manna. Fresh. They didn't have leftovers. They had fresh manna every day. Every single day, shoes didn't wear out. The weather didn't beat on them. He made a way for them. What are we complaining about? 
Let's do like Job. Let's get down and start worshiping God. And see the turnaround. See the atmosphere change. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to know that he's there. That's why he takes us through. We're precious in his sight. He's not just going to leave us to the wolves. That's why he gives us a shepherd. To keep us in. To keep us safe. He loves us. He loves his people. Amen. Amen. So he allows us to go through the furnace. To prove what temper we are made of. And whether we can be fashioned for his work. The potter takes the clay and molds it according to his will. He kneads it and works it. He tears it apart and presses it together. He wets it and then dries it. He lets it lie for a while without touching it. When it is perfectly pliable, he continues the work of making it a vessel. Amen. A good vessel. A good vessel that he can use. Amen. God is molding. He's shaping us. He's making us each and every day. Amen. He's taking off things that he sees that isn't good for the vessel. Amen. Glory be to God. He's making sure there's no holes in there. So what he puts in that vessel, it'll hold up. Amen. He forms it into the shape and on the wheel trims and polishes it. He dries it in the sun and bakes it in the oven. Thus, it becomes a vessel fit for use. So the great masterworks desires to mold and fashion us. And as the clay is in the hand of the potter, so are we to be in the hands of the Lord. We are not to try to do the work of the potter. Amen. Our part is to yield ourselves to be molded by the master's work. Amen. He doesn't force anything on us. We have a choice. Amen. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceedingly jo- with exceeding joy. And that's according to 1 Peter 4, verses 12 and 13. And we know that we must suffer and go through just like Jesus did. Amen. We have to be a part of that suffering if we want to have eternal life and reign with him. Amen. Glory be to God. In the full light of day and in the hearing of the music of other words, the caged bird will not sing the song that his master seeks to teach him. He learns a snatch of this and a thrill of that, but never a separate and entire melody. But the master covers the cage and places it where the bird will listen to the one song he is to sing. In the dark, He tries and tries again to sing that song until it is learned. And he breaks forth in perfect melody. Then the bird is brought forth, and ever after he can sing that song in the light. Thus God deals with his children. He has a song to teach us, and we have learned it in the midst of the shadows of affliction. We can sing it forevermore in eternity with him. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. We know that God can do all things but fail. And we can count on feeling stress in this journey. If we're going to obey Christ, we can take hope that stress is preparing us for riches we will enjoy for eternity. So just know that everything you go for is for a reason and a purpose. And just give God the praise in everything you go through. May it good or bad. Just give God the praise because he's worthy anyhow. He's worthy anyhow. I don't care what we go through. He's worthy. He is worthy. And he can bring you through. 
He's more than a conqueror. Amen. Glory be to God. So let's just worship the Lord. Amen. And know that he loves us no matter what we're going through. We're precious in his sight. Amen. God bless you and keep you. Amen. We thank God, amen, for the word. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The woman bringing the word of God. Yeah. After hearing the message, maybe there's somebody, they realize some say I've walked away. Some say I don't know it. But after hearing the word of God, yeah. Lord, I surrender. I give up all. Yeah. I surrender to your will. Yeah. Your way, your word. Yeah. How many know there is nothing too hard for God? Yeah. And when you come, you got to come with a mind to know that he's in charge. Yeah. You've given it to him. Yeah. Whatever needs to be fixed, he'll do. Yeah. Glory to God. Sometimes things are going on that we don't even know about. Amen. But I surrender. Yeah. When you give it to him, Ooh. he'll fix it. Amen. If there's one, you may come today. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. Father God, we come to you. Yes. We give all these people to you, God. Those that are hurting. Those that are in need. Those that realize that they need you now. For God, we realize we can't do nothing without you. We invite you in today. Take time. Move to make out what you want us to be. Glory to God. You have your way. Make us what you want us to be. Oh, God, have your way today. God, some are sick among us. You're a physician that have never lost a case. One touch will deliver us from everything. Oh, God, so many are dying with the virus. One touch. Glory to God. We give it to you today. God, look on my grandnephew in Chicago, Illinois. We know there is no distance in prayer. God, you got it in your... Hallelujah! It's in your hands, God. Touch his mind. Oh, God, get all down in his heart. Way down in his spirit. Save him before it's too late. And God, if it be your will, heal but we know he needs salvation today. Do it now. In the name of Jesus. Save those that need to be saved. Heal those that need healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Move by your spirit. And God, we give it all to you. Look on our children. Their children, God. Oh, God, save them before it's too late. Oh, God, we ask you, God, look on your children every week. Keep us, oh, God. Help us, a, hallelujah, lift holy hands to you. To walk the straight and narrow way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, God, we're giving it to you. Whatever the need. You, hallelujah, you a way maker. You can do it, God. Send healing. Send salvation. Send deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus, just have your way. And we thank you for what you're doing now. In Jesus' mighty name. And God, look on Pastor May. God, restore his strength. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. He's laboring with your people. Restore his strength, God. Teach him how to lean more on you, God. 
God, does he give out? We know you've given it back to him. And we said, thank you, God. Look on all the churches all over the land. Let your spirit abide. In the name of Jesus. Keep us, God. And we shall be kept. Oh, God, we said thank you for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Amen. At this time, Deacon Lover will come and let's receive him as he comes.